there's one challenge that will define Europe in the 21st century, it's the global energy crisis. The actions we take today and tomorrow will change the course of European history forever. Let's look ahead just 40 years. By 2050, we know that electricity will be the dominant source of energy in Europe, powering almost all surface transport. We know that an average growth rate of 2% will have doubled Europe's demand for electricity. A rate of 3% will have tripled it. And we know that during the same time frame, we need to slash our greenhouse gas emissions by 80%. Today, fossil fuels account for around 50% of EU energy consumption. But we know that by 2050, these finite resources will be running out. The peak of discovery of oil was in the 60s. That's 40 years ago. And it's obvious that the peak of discovery has to deliver a corresponding peak of production. Now, there's a great argument raging as to whether it's this year, last year, a few years into the future which really misses the point when what matters is the vision of the long decline on the other side of peak. And by the end of this century, the stuff's just about gone. Diminishing resources are just part of the picture. As long as Europe is dependent on fossil fuels, energy security will pose a constant threat to supply. The permanent uh, security of supply threat from Russia uh, via Ukraine to the European Union. Definitely demonstrates how vulnerable you are if there is a cut of supply. Then you are left in the cold. As competition for dwindling resources heats up, European countries operating individually cannot hope to compete with the US and emerging energy superpowers like China and India. The sheer scale of their purchasing power will give these giants priority supply and the ability to negotiate lower prices for their consumers, while one by one, EU member states and their consumers will move to the back of the queue. EU is 50% dependent from imports today, with tendency to grow to 70-85%. So we need to reduce uh, uh, imports, we need to use more our sources, but we need to find the sources of energy that are sustainable for the next generation as well. Europe as we know it will not survive the energy crisis unless we can find a new primary energy resource. It must have enormous capacity, it must be renewable, and we must own it indefinitely. The good news is we already have this resource and it's on our doorstep. It is our offshore wind. So, how will it change Europe's energy future? Well, first of all, we reduce our CO2 emissions. Second of all, we reduce our exposure to fossil fuel prices in the future and carbon prices in the future. It means that we don't have to import an ever-increasing amount of energy into Europe. It's our energy and we own it, and we can also reap the commercial benefits of exporting this to a world that a few decades from now cannot afford to live without it. One of the biggest advantages of wind energy is we know exactly what the cost of the fuel is going to be the next 25 years that they're going to operate. We know exactly what the carbon costs are going to be of that technology for the next 25 years. We have no idea what the cost is going to be on fossil fuels 25 years from now. Today, Europe's population stands at 500 million. So how much wind energy will we need to generate by 2050? By 2050, uh, we'll probably be making 50% of our electricity uh, from wind power uh, in Europe, 30% from solar. I reckon about 10% uh, from new marine uh, renewables, which haven't really been commercialised yet. And there'll probably be a role for, uh, you know, for nuclear as well there, maybe 10%. If electricity demand doubles by 2050, we're going to have to construct uh, 1.2 million megawatts of wind energy. If it trebles, we're going to have to construct 1.8 million uh, megawatts. Uh, given that we're only going to be able to build 200,000 megawatts approximately onshore, that means we're going to have to uh, anticipate and to build 1 to 1.6 million megawatts of wind power in the seas and oceans around Northern Europe. Europe has one of the world's best offshore wind resources. The question is, does that resource have the capacity to generate these vast quantities of electricity? If you're looking at rather you know, close to shore within Europe, no further than 30 kilometres, 
and in relatively shallow waters, no deeper than 40 metres, you actually have more than enough to supply Europe's current needs. And we're not looking at the wider North Sea, which actually is a quite shallow sea. There's quite a bit of it, no deeper than 30 metres. So there's even more available there if you go further offshore. It could give us energy independence if we are looking for, uh, clean energy we are looking for, and also good prices and stable prices for the consumer. So if we manage to harness the offshore wind, then we can say the future of security of supply of energy for next generations are guaranteed. Offshore wind has the capacity to meet our future electricity needs many times over, but we shouldn't underestimate the task Europe has to undertake to harness it. Never in history before had we to take electricity on average over, let's say, a thousand miles and carry it to where the people are. It's the greatest project uh, that Europe will ever engage in. Um, it'll be the main source of our energy uh, by 2050. Uh, we don't have any options but to do it.